Okay guys, so stated in the other video um, that this is a virtual uh, environment that we're setting up and that I already currently have this set up already on my network. Um, I have to actually create a like dummy machine to do all my, my testing. So right now, this machine that I'm logged into now, all the steps you're doing, you should be able to do on your native computer. So whatever laptop you have that's currently on, uh, on the network or the actual computer that you set up um, the smooth wall on. So just follow the steps that I'm doing. You don't have to create, because as you can see, I have a separate Linux machine here. You don't have to create this. You can do it from whatever machine you're on right now and just log right in. So what we're going to do is put in 192.168.35.1 and then we're gonna put the uh, uh, colon there and then 81, not 80. And then after that, it's gonna pop up asking for your username and password and just put in the username and password. Don't forget the username is admin and the password is whatever you specified during the installation. First thing you wanna do is make sure you're up to date. So go to the maintenance tab and then go down to updates. And as you can see, we're down by about two updates. So scroll down, click the old update button. Then that little thing is gonna cycle here and as you can see, it's going to download the updates and then configure it and get you back up and running here. Okay. Now your updates have been done. So you should be good to go with the application to run forward from here. Now, one of the things I like to point out is that this does very good is actually keep a track of how much uh, bandwidth you're using. If you're using an ISP, like most people that measure your bandwidth per day and tell you how much you've been using and you have like a bandwidth cap, this is a good way to get a good idea because it will tell you live how much bandwidth is actually being used so that you can get a good idea of where you are as far as hitting your uh, bandwidth limits. Now, you have this already set up. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the next piece, which is configuring up uh, your smooth wall. Now, the content filter part added to the uh, smooth wall. So before you do all that, you wanna go down to services, remote access, and you're gonna to wanna to allow SSH and hit save. That's just for personal reasons. You really don't need to because we're just gonna go here and then type the commands in live. But if you did want to remote into it, that's how you do it. You have to turn that on. And it's not port 22, it's port 222. So it's this IP address and then port 222. But let's go ahead and download the updates that you're going to need to put onto this so it can become a content filter. So here's how you go ahead and do the installation. This is actually from the Smoothwall website. Um, what we're going to do now is just go over to here. Sorry, wrong one. We're going to go over to our smooth wall, which is here. Minimize that so I can see everything. Space, there you go. So you're going to CD into the temporary directory. The reason for CDing into the temporary directory is that you're changing the directory to the temp directory. Every time your machine gets rebooted, the temp directory actually gets flushed. That's a good thing when you load these kind of programs in your temp directory because this is going to be about, I think, 30 or 40 megabytes. But the whole purpose is that you want to dump a lot of your, your files that you don't need into your temp directory so that when you reboot the machine, you'll instantly get that space right back. Kind of makes things a little bit easier. We're going to type wget o capital O S W E dash 3.1 u1 filtering v 2.5 tar vz2 and then that's the name you're going that's the name it's going to take when it um, downloads this machine got to put a hyphen here okay so let's verify that's the name that this file is going to take after it's download, and this is actually the URL that you're going to to get the file. So basically what you're telling the machine is this URL that I'm typing right now is where a file is located at. And once you download it, give it the name that was given before. So that SWE thing. Okay, so us s t p 
Okay. It's going to go out to the internet. It's going to download the file. Now, before uh, we get into extracting the file and everything, the reason uh, I'm just going through this with you step by step instead of just saying, hey, here are the steps, because there are some configurations you're going to have to do. I've run this for about a year now and I've run into different issues. So, what I'm going to do is show you how to edit certain things to fix uh, the issues that I ran into, um, so which is why I'm giving you each step step by step. Uh, I also want to say that if you have any issues with the deployment of this section of the content filter, you can go to the Smoothwall community and I'll be more than happy to help you out with this. But like I said, it's one of those things where you set it and forget it. So, Okay, so T-A-R-J-X-V-F and that's just basically saying that you want to extract that file to the root. So you're going to do dash C and that's to the root of the entire um, operating system. Okay, drops those files in, and then you're gonna do dot slash install filtering, and it's a Perl file, and what that's gonna do is run an installation script on your machine, smooth vault machine. All right, so you're just gonna basically let this run through, and then once it's finished, you're gonna log back into the um, Smoothwall operating systems uh, web GUI. Okay, so it's complete. So now we're going to go back to the web GUI. All right, so this is what it looks like now, right? But if I refresh this page, yep. you have some extra stuff here. Yeah, log back in. That's strange. Let's see, maybe I missed uh huh. Sometimes when you run into that issue, you just need to reboot your smooth wall. So let's go ahead and reboot it. What we encountered with that is a page cannot be found, so it's like your error 404 page or whatever. I'm rebooting the smooth wall and it should reinitialize everything, and upon reinitialization we should be able to get everything back up and running. I'll go ahead and restart the video as soon as the reboot's complete. Okay, like I was, like I said, once you do the reboot, it should be working just fine, and here it is. You want to enable the proxy, you want it in transparent mode, you want to turn on the add zap filter and the URL filtering. All right? And after that, you want to scroll down to the very bottom, save and clear cache, go to add zap, and show printer friendly pages. AdZap will actually find anything that is uh, that's from a known ad website and then block it. You're going to see something that says this ad has been ad zapped on a page, um, which is very normal. Uh, if you want to disable it, you just have to go back over here to the web proxy part and just disable ad zapper. But I prefer keeping it on. Click for showing printer friendly pages because sometimes ad zapper will block it and that will stop it from happening. And go to the URL filter. Now, by default, this is all that's on the URL filter. You can block known ad websites, hacking, proxy, porn, mail, violence, and where sites. But, like I said in the uh, whole video to get you here, is that we're trying to offer you a corporate-like firewall environment for free. And that is not good enough for me. So we're going to do this. Oh, wrong URL. Gonna do a Google search for URL blacklist. Oh, they changed to .com now. Good. Go to urlblacklist.com. Go to download, and then the very first one to obtain the latest file. 
click on that. It's a 21 megabyte file, but trust me, it is so worth the download. I'm just going to download it to my computer. You're not going to extract it, you're just going to download it to your computer. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to this video as soon as this downloads complete. The file just finished downloading here, so let's go ahead and do the installation of the file to the smooth wall. All you're going to do is click on the old smooth wall. You're going to scroll way down to the bottom here, and you're going to see an area where you can upload your own blacklist. Hit browse. And then from browse, you can go find the actual file here. So let's see here. There we go. There's the blacklist. Now before I upload the blacklist, I want to show you. This is all you can do right now as a content filter. Let's see what Smoothwall is going to do when I add this on here. Upload blacklist. It's going to take a little bit because it's a small file. It's only 25 megabytes. but. You have to imagine it's 25 megabytes of pure text. So what it's doing is exporting all the text files that are out of that one zip file. And after exporting all those files, it's going to go ahead and just start churning and churning and churning and churning more, more um, uh, files into the operating system. If you're running on a limited system like I'm on where it's very lean, you might want to consider rebooting the machine after uploading this blacklist, um, but that's totally up to you. Now look at all this good content you have here. So many things you can block now. You can do beer and liquor sales, beer and liquor info, banking, finances, mixed adult, uh, news websites, online auctions, vacation sites. It's perfect. So let's say that you have a small office and you're trying to stop your employees from surfing the web and going to sites that you don't approve of. You can simply just make these little check boxes and they'll end up getting a kind little reminder that they can't go to those websites. So I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do porn sites, fishing sites, wares sites, scrolling up. Um, adult websites, ad websites, anti-spyware, artistic nude websites, just normal stuff that you would see getting blocked, lingerie sites, uh, hacking websites. There you go. So that's normally what you would see it blocked. I don't understand why French education is. That just seems really funny to me every time I see that. Once you do that, you want to do a save and a restart on the filter. It will force the filter to then reboot itself. So now that the filter's there, I'm gonna try going to playboy.com and you'll see what you'll get. Now if the filter is done correctly, as you can see, the site's actually blocked, the filter is porn, so now you know which filter actually has it blocked. Um, if you believe that a site is blocked in error, so I believe, I think YouTube, if I do mixed adult, YouTube is actually blocked on that. So let me turn on mixed adult. Save and reset. And the good thing is everything stays blocked. You have to actually make rules to let it out. So let's do YouTube.com. Boom. Mixed adult. So now you go, oh, well, I, I need to get to YouTube. So you go here, click the checkbox here for enable whitelist. Type in YouTube.com. Save and reset. And then once you do a save and reset, it should cycle through, boom. And if I go back to youtube.com, boom, I get youtube.com. Now it also goes in reverse. If there's a website that isn't being blocked by this category filter, but you still want it blocked, you can check off this little box here for custom blacklist, and then you can add the URL to custom blacklist. Now, if you're doing this at home, I normally make sure I add like YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Google services, things of that nature, because you want to be able to get to those kind of sites, Facebook, even Twitter. But if you're like some people who don't want that on their network, you just add it to the blacklist and you'll be good to go. But there you guys go. Content filter has been deployed. Next step is that we're going to be downloading a thing called ClearOS, as you can see right here. And I'm going to show you how to download ClearOS. That's going to be our firewall. 
and then after doing that we'll go back to this test machine and I'll show you how it, the whole internet experience is going to be once you deploy ClearOS on your network.